October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, a time dedicated to raising awareness about breast cancer and promoting the importance of early detection and treatment. Join me today as I talk to survivor Kimberly Merritt about her personal journey through breast cancer and how it has changed her life forever. Welcome to the show. Kimberly's story is one of hope, resilience, and transformation. Through her experiences with breast cancer, she has gained a profound insight and a renewed perspective on life. Her journey not only highlights the challenges that she faced by battling breast cancer, but also underscores the strength and courage required to overcome them. Kimberly, thank you so much for being on my show today. I really appreciate you coming all the way it's down a to, to be a, a guest it's an honor yeah. to be here. Yeah, this is a very serious topic that we're about to discuss. You know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and every year, this will be my third year in a row now, um, when I did my show in Dallas, I yeah. had a breast cancer guest on, and you know, it's just a very important topic for all women, but especially for me because I'm a survivor as well. So tell the audience where you come from. Um, I come from a little county in West Virginia, uh, Mingo County, Del Barton. Um, everybody knows everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. you know, down home folks. And, yeah. And yeah, you're only about, mm, probably, well, you, I know where you live, so mm -hmm. the town of Del Barton is only probably 15 minutes from where I used to live. Make one, yeah. But yeah, but yeah. Um, you're a little further out, yeah. <laughs> so it'd probably yeah. take me about a half an hour to get to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. but I know exactly where you live, yeah. so anyway, um, so I, you know, like I said, the reason I ask you on is because you are a survivor. Yeah. You're a breast cancer survivor. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> how long have you, how far are you out from? Um, August uh, 2022. So two years. Wow. Right two, two years, years. already. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it doesn't seem like it. I mean, I I mean it probably does to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I wanted to say this before you go on. Today yeah. makes me four years out. Four yeah. years ago, I had my mastectomy. And, you know, they never say, they don't say you're cancer-free until the five-year mark. Yeah. So they came in and he said, you know, from all the tests and everything, you're you're no evidence of disease. That's yeah. what they say. And yeah. so I was like, well, thank God. So today yeah. is my four-year anniversary. So Thanks I think God. it's really appropriate yeah. that we're doing the show yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. So, um. Tell me what kind of cancer you have, because there's, listen, there's a lot of different types yeah, of breast is. cancer, y'all, mm -hmm. and different stages and, mm -hmm. you know, all the things. Um, so tell me what type you had yeah. and what stage you were. I was um, ERPR positive. So it's hormone positive mm -hmm. at breast cancer. Um, it's an H2, H, HER2, HER2 negative, negative. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm not really sure what that even means, uh -huh. but, um, <laughs> but I know it was a hormone uh, yeah. positive. Hormone fed. Yeah. Yeah. Now, see, I was triple negative, so yeah. I didn't have. Do you still do like the, the blockers and the hormones? Yes. And the, okay. I am on um, an AI. Is what they call yeah. them, uh, Armatrace inhibitor. Oh, I think okay. If I've said that right, yeah. but um, it blocks like ninety percent of your hormones. Yeah. From your body and to keep that from coming yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. Since your hormones was the reason you had it, so yeah. I I totally get that. Now I don't have to take anything because where I was triple negative, yeah. I don't have any of the hormones. So thank God. Yeah. Now is that something you're going to have to be on for the rest of your life? Um, they want me on it for ten years. Okay. Ten years. So I've been on it almost two. two. Um, it's not a fun thing, but you know it's it's worth it yeah. to keep the cancer at bay. Yeah. So. Does, does the medicine have a lot of side effects that you have to deal with? Um. Well. Right now, I am like on a two week break from it because I've been, like I told you, I've been having like dizziness and stuff. Yeah. But the main symptoms that I've experienced is just like aches, you know, in your oh, hands yeah. and feet. Yeah. Um, but not, it's not been too bad. It's tolerable. Oh, that's um, good. But I know a lot of women who have a, a, hard, a harder time on yeah. it than me. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I mean, it's some of the stuff that they give us to save us. Yeah. You know, like with the chemo, you know, you yeah. had the red devil like I had, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. man, that, yeah, that stuff is bad. bad. When they call it the red devil, they really mean it. It's, yeah. it's the devil. <laughs> I mean, it was bad. That is yeah. probably the worst I have ever been sick in my whole yeah. life. But I realized, you know, because I, I was... Because I had a couple of friends that was like, don't take chemo. And I was like, if I don't, they told me I would be dead yeah. by... You know, oh yeah, Christmas of 2020. Yeah, because, I mean, it was yeah. you know, serious. Yeah. And so I chose for the chemo... Um, I will say this, if mine ever comes back, I don't know if I would go through treatment or not or just go on to heaven to be with the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really mean, don't. It's a decision. <laughs> yeah. I think with most breast cancer survivors, like the biggest fear is a recurrence. Yeah, yes. I mean, it is. It's always in the back of your mind. Always. And it's something that, you know, 
you're just extra cautious mm -hmm. about. Yeah. But that's one thing this has taught me, um, this journey has taught me is to trust my body. Yeah. When something feels wrong, you know, that's say right. something about yeah. it um, and don't put it off. Yeah. Because I know six women right now besides, you know, in yeah. our area who mm -hmm. are just diagnosed with breast cancer. You know, that's, it's really something because the prevalence of breast cancer back there yeah. in the in the small area in southern West Virginia where we're from yeah. is like the numbers are, are staggering. It, it is, is it is mind blowing to me because I knew like five women from my little area that yeah. I grew you know I grew up in, yeah. and it was a tiny little place. And um, yeah, that's and it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of makes me wonder, is it environmental? Like mine yeah. was not hereditary. Yeah. I didn't, nobody in my family had it or anything. Yeah. So what stage were you when you were diagnosed? I was a uh, 2B, stage wow. 2B. Um, so it progressed. I had a grade three tumor. Yeah. Wow. Um, so that, it was very aggressive. That's why they wanted me to do the chemotherapy. Yeah. Thankfully I didn't have to do radiation. Like, I think I was more leery of radiation than I was the chemo. Yeah, wow. You know? well, let me tell you, radiation's yeah. not fun. I was, I look like somebody had put me on a grill, on a barbecue grill. Yeah. I mean, it, my skin turned black yeah. and peeled off. And then I was just as pink as I could be. Yeah. Like a, like a rare steak, you know, yeah. like, and it was, it was awful. Yeah. I had 31 treatments and it took me the course of two and a half months because we had the holidays and stuff. But yeah. anyway, yeah, it was. It was ugly, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it didn't hurt. The, yeah. the radiation itself didn't hurt. Yeah. It just, you know, you had to go every day. So, yeah. um, tell me about how you found your cancer. Did was it through regular screenings or? Well, I think I found it because the Lord. <laughs> honestly, yeah. Yeah. I was just I would do exams, mm -hmm. you know, and they would tell you to stand in front of the mirror, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of look. Yeah. And it's very important for you to know what's normal for mm -hmm. yourself. Right. Um, but I didn't feel a lump or anything, but I had raised, cause you raise your arm and you know, you feel mm -hmm. around and I saw a bump right here wow. under my arm wow. and I was like, well, that doesn't look good. So I was like, I better get it checked. And so I called my doctor and I said, can I come in for a visit? And I said, it's about time for my mammogram. Just go ahead and do that and get it out of the way. And I wasn't expecting them to find anything, yeah. you know, cause the year before it was all clear, fine. Mm -hmm. And the lady that did the mammogram is like they you know they want you to come back they called me and want you to come back for an ultrasound and i'm like oh yeah, yeah that's <laughs> oh. you know yeah and so i was a little shocked at, you know but it took me a while even when i got my diagnosis for it to really hit me that i have cancer right. yeah you know because you just don't think about it yeah. but i mean i i did think about it because i had mm -hmm. four aunts who had cancer wow cancer. so yours, yours yeah but it was see it was on my dad's side and what yeah. they they tell you if it's on your mom's side is when mm -hmm. you should be concerned yeah but i don't think that's the case i mean yeah. especially now i think every woman regardless of family <laughs> history any of that exactly to be extra precautious you know mm -hmm. just learn your body you know yeah. i don't know if you've noticed I, I belong to a couple of support groups on facebook and what i noticed as i was going through my journey was like a third if not more of the women in those groups were young yes. and i'm talking like 30 years yes. older younger yeah. and that blew my mind because the you know the all the educational material yeah. the places say get, start your mammograms at 40. yeah i'm a huge advocate of starting mammograms at 20. Yeah. let's yeah. start them at 20. Yeah. i mean it's not well, gonna hurt i know a girl uh, from back home her name's marissa and she was just 23. wow just had a baby oh and you know found like a sore and she thought it was where she was breastfeeding yeah come to find out she had breast cancer wow. so i mean it's it's women who are younger and younger who are you know coming out having breast cancer yeah. but i know for my daughters i want them you know to start as early as they will allow yeah. it because they are higher risk now have they been uh have they checked their BRCA genes yet or um i had the testing uh -huh. and it i had no BRCA gene oh, okay. like mutations okay, anything good. like that but it was just the family history and they said it was probably environmental oh. uh mm -hmm. environmental yeah. causes so yeah. And that's something I was just reading about today. And yeah. I was like, we don't know the things mm -hmm. chemical wise, you know, Let me that tell you, go I, on our body. I'm really yeah. big on that. I mean, the deodorant, shampoo, hairspray, yeah. makeup. What, we don't know what's in yeah. stuff, you know, our food, these, the blue dyes, the red dyes, the yeah. yellow dyes, all that stuff. The chemicals have to do something. The cleaning supply. Listen, yeah. I am a bleach freak. I use bleach. Yeah. I can pour bleach on the floor and mop and just bleach. Yeah. 
and my house is <laughs> like my dog's like whoo yeah but I mean <laughs> like we don't know what we're doing to ourselves no. but you know it, it is dangerous but it's so hard to I, I, I wanted to go over to plant-based and all that but yeah. let me tell you that's so hard to change over because man that takes all of your time and that oh, takes yeah. a real huge life turnaround oh, you yeah. know so and I'm used to like if it's not cleaned with a certain thing then it's not clean <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> like the Lysol wipes and the yeah, bleach you know? I was reading today that even our makeup mm -hmm. can you know it's linked to cancer yeah and I was like good yeah. But you know, it's it's the grace of God yeah, it that is. we're here. I it, mean, it, I it is. It's That's what I said today. God. When I posted on Facebook about being four years out, mm -hmm. people are like, "Wow, look at you! You're strong." And I'm like, "Nope." By the grace of God, yeah, I don't take any of God's credit. I give Him all the credit, all the glory, because it was Him. You know, I, I'll tell my story some other time, but it was just a miracle yeah. that that mine was found you yeah. know because they kept putting it off and putting it off i mean it was like 18 months later yeah after i had the first symptom yeah and i was already up to stage three had a seven centimeter tumor yeah and so that was pretty big but how did you feel initially when you first heard the words you have cancer because man that's tough <laughs> i was shocked like mm -hmm. unbelief yeah like what but i mean i wasn't like i wasn't one to say why me because why not mm -hmm. you know i'm a woman mm -hmm. and that just automatically puts me into a higher bracket for breast mm -hmm. cancer yeah, it does so um but when i found out i just dug in mm -hmm. i wanted to know everything yeah. I, I looked on every article i mean anything i could find mm -hmm. on breast cancer because i was like i'm arming myself with information with knowledge exactly. i want to know exactly what's the next step you know and that's probably the hardest part yeah. is waiting for the next step yeah after you it find is out. <laughs> um yeah they told me they were like don't google anything I'm going to go home and Google. Oh, yeah. Okay, Google's going to be my doctor. <laughs> when my doctor's office is closed, I'm yeah. going to Google everything. Because yeah. we want to know. I mean, that's with anything. Let's say, you know, you got I got you a model airplane. You want to put it together and you had no instructions. You're going to go to YouTube and go, yeah. like, where do I put this? I mean, yeah. we, 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 we're curious creatures, and especially when it comes yeah. to our health and our bodies. Yeah. And when I first heard, you know, Dr. King called me, and he was like, you know, Miss Adams, I'm sorry you have cancer. Mm -hmm. I was numb. Yeah. I heard the words, but I had known for a long time. Yeah. I knew and you, you just knew. you know it yeah. you know it you feel it yeah i knew but when he said it i was like what yeah you know and that shock and all that and after yeah. that wore off i was like let's get a plan together Fight let's mode. go yeah <laughs> i was just I like was let's in. go let's plow through yeah. and, you and have it was to almost be. like autopilot yeah. until that uh for me it was mm -hmm. like until i got through the chemo and you know out of that stage yeah. um it was autopilot i was yeah. like i'm not you know i felt things I allow myself to feel things, yeah. but at the end of the day, I was like, I am not going to sit and torture myself right. over this because my life is not mine. Right. Yeah. You know, and he's the one who says mm -hmm. when my last day will be. And that brought me so much comfort yeah. because I knew in his hands. Well, I was, was going to ask you how much, how, how big of a part did your faith, because you're a Christian. Yeah. You, you study the word, you preach yeah. the word, you sing, you teach yeah. at a Christian school, like you're all the things, yeah. you know. So how much, how, how big of a part did your faith play in your journey? For cause me, it was everything. It was. Um, <laughs> so. I leaned, I leaned into the Lord. Yeah. And um, when I first, you know, when this first came about, the scripture was Isaiah 65. And it, that's one I held on to. It's like before they even know they have a problem I'll yeah. go ahead and answer them yeah. and I have this little group called come to the table yeah. and it's kind of based on Psalms 23 mm -hmm. and it says he goes before us and he comes behind us mm -hmm. and so that brought me so much comfort and peace in that because cancer is an enemy <laughs> cancer is the enemy and he says he'll set a table for us in the presence of our enemy so every day I was like, okay, Lord, I'm sitting here at your table and I'm going to trust that the enemy's sitting back, but he can't do anything. So it's the faith is what got me through. It really is. Me too. I'm so sorry. It's crying. fine. I'm just it's very emotional fine. right now. I am too. Um, <laughs> you know, my faith was what got me through and I held on to, um, I think it's, I don't know, I'm blanking y'all. Yeah. I still got brain fog. Mark 534. Yeah. Um, that faith is made the whole. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's the one I hold on to because... I couldn't have done it without God. I could not have made it through. That was 
you know, the hardest thing in my life up yeah. to that point, you know, yeah. recently I lost my husband. That's been hard. But up to that point, I had not known what hard was. Yeah. Um, and I do so, know that your book, I read that before I even, yeah, I, you before I even, this. you know, that was wild. Uh, me, God and cancer, God, cancer, God, God, cancer and me. God and me. Yeah. 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 Um, but I read that and I remember just in trying to uh, praying for you and encouraging you. And I learned a lot from you about breast cancer. Yeah. Um, and that helped me, you know, your story helped me and just being able to say, Hey, Christy, this is going on. You know, yeah. it helped me. Oh, it helps yeah. to have friends. You, you know, really I was, when you, when you messaged me and told me my, I was, my heart broke for yeah. you because I knew what you were facing yeah. and my heart just dropped yeah. and I was, cause I knew you had gotten my book, but I didn't know there was a reason that you had yeah. gotten it, you know? Yeah. And then when you messaged me, my heart just it yeah. literally just broke for you yeah. so so but you know i was reading some statistics and of course we've all heard one in every eight women's going to get breast yeah. cancer or that's yeah. statistically yeah. one in every eight and yeah. I always sometimes like if i'm in a doctor's office with a bunch of women i look mm -hmm. around and i go i think how many people in here have had cancer you know or yeah. breast cancer yeah. and breast cancer is the second um it's like the second I don't want to say most popular, but most common type most of common, cancer. Yeah. Most yeah. common, um, behind skin cancer for women. Yeah, yeah. And they told me mine was like the most common for women. I thought, well, then wow. that should be easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't thinking of yeah. what that actually well, meant. Yeah, you know? skin cancer is the first most common, yeah. uh, but but breast cancer is, yeah. you know. But anyway, um, and also like we talked about before, if you have a mother, a sister, uh, a grandma, or well, a mother or sister who has had it, yeah. or a daughter, that that's called increases. first degree. Yeah. So yeah. you know, so if you're, it increases your chances. Yeah. So, um, but I know, I think for women who haven't got cancer, prevent prevention is key, mm -hmm. and yes. catching anything early. You have mm -hmm. to know your body. Like I said, like for me myself now, when I take a bath or something, it's automatic. Yeah. You know, I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, so you are aware of your body. Yeah. You know what's normal and what's not. Mm -hmm. And as soon as something feels, oh, well, that didn't feel normal, mm -hmm. call your doctor. Yeah, exactly. You know, get it checked out. I've done that so yeah. many times, Kimberly. I have, you know, I mean, we come to, like for me, when I was going to the cancer center every single week um, for six well longer than that because my radiation went on for two so almost a year almost a year yeah so go and you form this bond with your nurses yeah and then your oncologist yeah. and then it's like i remember when they said you don't have to come back anymore i was like i want to i want to come back next yeah. week because <laughs> yeah. i came to depend on them like yeah. i was like i was i was scared without them yeah and i said well what if something happened or what if i feel yeah. something and i'm not here with y'all yeah. and they were like just call us yeah and i can't tell you the number of times i've called and said I'm getting dizzy yeah. I, i'm having headaches I'm, i lost my balance yeah. you know and and where i had my lymph nodes taken out of course yeah. that stays sore up in yeah. my armpits and yeah. stuff and i'm like oh, it's sore and they're like come in we'll check it yeah. and so that's you know being safe is good yeah. but so what do you recommend because there's several different things that women can do and you mentioned the self-exam but what yeah. do you recommend that even young girls as young as your daughter your yeah. daughter is 15 years yeah. old um what do you recommend that women do to stay on top of their own their own health? Well, I think exercise, and I'm, I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> I bought me one of those walking pads. Oh, good. But um, I think you know, just they said you keep keep your weight kind of you know not high, you know, because obesity increases your risk of cancer. So, and you know, just trying to eat healthier. Um, I mean have your sweets every once in a while yeah. but you know try to eat Don't healthier <laughs> yeah. and um and pay attention to what we put in our bodies because yeah. I, I really do believe the majority of women who get cancer it's an environmental yeah. issue yeah, because if if we go back in, t in back in time yeah. <laughs> if we go back and look at history yeah. i don't know if it's because they didn't have the ability to track the statistics like they yeah. do now or if it has just become more prevalent now because of because listen my granny your grandmother yeah. honey my granny and grandpa had a farm like that well they had farm but they had they grew their own vegetables yeah. they had gardens yeah. like yeah. they my granny used to can we used to eat fresh yes. stuff yes you know my son yeah. grew up on like you know i was going to the store and buying stuff and yeah. cans and stuff like that that's yeah. a you know it's, it's it's so yeah so i think that it is a lot of it is environmental i mean even down to like the 
I don't know, I want to get political, but like, you know, who yeah. knows with coming out of the cars and the jets oh, yeah. and all that yeah. stuff, you know, so, I mean, yeah, so, but, so what kind of testing do you recommend that women do? Um, definitely, if you're 40 and up, you get that yearly mammogram mm -hmm. and go in for your yearly checkups. Yeah. Um, because your doctor might notice something you don't. Mm -hmm. um, but just definitely, and if you feel, I mean, if you start feeling tired and yeah. you don't know why, just fatigue. Yeah. And I didn't know that was a symptom. Yeah. I and, didn't either. And that was a big yeah. part of mine. Huge And part. I was just like so tired all the time. Yeah. I thought it was COVID, you know, like yeah. long COVID. Yeah. Um, but there, there are little symptoms and signs and it's just good to be aware, not in fear yeah. of it, but just be aware of, you know, what your body's any feeling, changes. any changes, even with women who are like us, mm -hmm. who are survivors. Um, you have to be aware, and, and your doctors want to know uh, if there yeah. are new pain. Is that new? Yeah, is it they persisting? <laughs> they you know, do. you need to call them and say, hey, I got this new thing, you know, mm -hmm. going on. I got this back pain, you know. And so it's very important to just stay on top of that, and, you know, and be health conscious. My oncologist, if he, if I say, like, well, my back's been hurting. How long has it been hurting? Is it yeah. new? How long has it been hurting? Yeah. Because if it's something new, or how did, does it hurt worse when you lay down? Yeah. Because, you know, a sign of cancer that's spread to the Fine, hurts worse when you yeah. lay down yeah. you would think laying down would be more relieve it yeah but it doesn't that's a sign i'm like well, yeah. thank god you know thank god i'm this far out i mean listen i i firmly believe that i know the day i went to church it was june 20th mm -hmm. and, and and God healed me that day. I felt him heal me. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm not going back to no more treatment. Everybody with church was like, the elders were like, you, you still need to go get finish your chemo, yeah. get your radiation. Yeah. I'm like, but God healed me. And they were yeah. like, well, finish it. <laughs> yeah. But I, I knew that God had healed yes. I, I felt the healing that yeah. day. And I'm not ashamed to tell that yeah. either. I ain't ashamed to testify. I mean, yeah. God healed me. He is the whole entire reason yeah. I'm here. Well, I just like two months ago, back in August, um, had a scare, like around May. I found two lumps on yeah, my chest yeah. and then I went to see a surgeon because I'm looking into reconstructions mm -hmm. you know and she was feeling around and felt another lump under here and she's like you need to get an MRI and I'm like yeah. okay so the next Monday I mean they got me in yeah, um, and did it but like we prayed and I just like it's it's not yeah. it, that's not what it is yeah. and when I went in for the MRI it was totally clear yeah. not even scar tissue wow they didn't wow. see any scar tissue and i'm like Gosh. i don't know how that's possible yeah, no. <laughs> it's oh, just no. a big scar yeah. you know <laughs> but like nothing you know no fibroid tissue anything and uh so i know it was the lord yeah, he's faithful he Kimberly. is he's so he faithful. Is faithful he is um I'm sorry. That's fine. That's fine. Now that you've come through this, um, how did it affect your life? Um, I'm going to say for the better. Listen, I, you know, I, I had that that vlog that I did almost yeah. every day. I'd yeah. make videos, and people were like, how are you doing this? Because I knew that God had a purpose for it, yes. and, and there was a plan he was going to use. it. I, I told him, I said, look, and I was like you. I didn't say why me. Not yeah. one time did I cry about yeah. it, complain about it, nothing. And I even looked, but like yesterday when I was looking at the pic, last night when I saw my picture and mm -hmm. I was going to make the post today, I was yeah. like, man, I, I look sick. Yeah. And I didn't realize when I was in it how sick I looked. But yeah. looking back, I'm like, golly, I look like, you know, really sick. Yeah. But I didn't think about that. All I thought about was what can I do for God today to give yeah. him glory? What can I do? My mind was so on him. And even today, when I was opening my refrigerator, I was in the kitchen today, mm -hmm. and I was like, Christy, where, where'd you go wrong? You don't, I don't post like I used to about God. I'm like, no. and I was, and I asked myself, I said, well, do you only, are you only close to him in the hard times? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't yeah. want to be like that, but it did, it, it hit me. I, I was yeah. like, I was so faithful to him. Yeah. During my cancer journey, you would think that you would get mad at God and run the other way, yeah. but that drew me to Him. It it does. I think <sighs> suffering. If you are a believer, yeah. In those times, for me, um, I found out that I was loved. Yeah. I mean, I I knew people loved me. Don't get me wrong, but I was always used to going and doing and and trying to be there for people and you know just trying to help and encourage. And like when this happened and everybody found out, I was overwhelmed yeah. with, I was like, wow, that people love me. Yeah. I was too. I was too. And it was, it was humbling. 
It was very it humbling. And uh, like, you know, when I had my surgery, my double mastectomy, like we didn't eat, we didn't have to cook. I didn't have to worry about nothing. People were bringing, you know, <laughs> know. Uh, a meal train, you yeah. know, and just people sent me cards, uh, people from out of state. I hadn't seen for years and years sent me care packages. Yeah. And I was like, wow. But the, the thing is, I think for myself, my faith is stronger. Yeah. Uh, my relationship with the Lord seems deeper. Yeah. Because when you are at a place where, you know, and I don't, for a minute, I didn't believe I was going to die. I knew I was going to get through this. And even like when the fear would try to come mm -hmm. on me, I knew I was going to get through it. But when you just, you just kind of don't know what to pray, you don't know what to say, you know, you just felt his presence. I felt his presence. And it's like, I wasn't alone. I knew I wasn't alone. And that was, I'm telling you, I don't know that anything in my life, and I'm not saying I've experienced everything because I haven't, but I don't know that there's anything that could make me turn from him yeah. because there's nothing to go to, yeah. you know, Amen. what else is there? What else um, is so I, I think it just strengthened my faith and it, it helped me to see that I, I am important to people. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, I am important to people. I mean, the things that I've done and not that I ever wanted credit for that, but it, you're, we impact other people. We do. Just by we kindness, do. just acts of service, just mm -hmm. these things that impacts other people's lives. And you might not even know it. You mm -hmm. know, you just felt like being nice to somebody today. And so I think that's always important. Like somebody, God lays somebody on your heart to do something, just do it, you know, just do it. What's it going to hurt? It's going to hurt nothing. Gonna hurt. It's going to exactly. bring a blessing. Yeah, it is. So, it is. so well, that's good. I'm glad, you know, I, I feel the same way. It, 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 it made my life better. It, it brought me closer to God. It caused me to look back and see him, the thread of him through my whole life as being my father. You know, my dad died when I was five years old mm -hmm. and I couldn't look back, you know, because the Bible said he's, God is the God of the fatherless. Yeah. And I can look back and see that that's true. And that he was so faithful to me and he yeah. always was my father. Yeah. But I mean, I have never been closer to him than I was during my illness. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah. Well, I you just... know, when, when we're weak, he is our strength. Yeah. Um, yes. So, and, you know, and he, in our suffering, that's when we, I think, because we are desperate. You know what I mean? We're desperate for that hope. We're desperate yeah. to hang on to something. And it moves out all the other junk. In it does. Life. I mean, it you does. realize, well, that ain't even important. I know. And so it, you, it opens your eyes to what is really important in this life. It's yeah. the people that you have in your life. You know, mm -hmm. those things that really carry you through. Yeah. And, you know, there, there's people that I know who don't have somebody that are, are going through this journey. Yeah. You know, might not have somebody. But um, any time that I could be of help to anybody I want to. You know, that's why I wanted to do this. If yeah. I can encourage yeah, anyone that, you know, there is hope, there is victory over this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a purpose and a plan for our lives. Yeah, there is. And if, and yeah. if, you know, some women will watch this and have a, a story similar to yours or mm -hmm. say, well, I didn't know you could look in the mirror and see. And yeah. you will touch somebody like that that may go, yeah. well, you know what? I'm going to start looking in the mirror and see what yeah. I can see. And what you look for is um, anything that looks different. Like sometimes there's certain cancers that w your skin will actually look like mm -hmm. an orange peel, mm -hmm. like have yes. dimples in yep. it. Like if you raise your arms up and you see like a dimple mm -hmm. in the skin, like a little indent, that is something to pay attention to. Yeah. So there's all these little things, and when you are used to your body, when you yeah. look at it, you know, once and a you month, know what it looks like. or however often <laughs> yeah. you do, I mean, every day, if, if that's a needed thing, you know, yeah. just stand there and look and say, okay, that's normal. Yeah. You know, that's not change. But pretty soon, you'll anything that's different, you'll notice. Yeah. You'll say, okay, I'm going to get that checked. So. so now that you've come through, like, one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that you can come through. How do you ensure that you live your life to the fullest every single day? What do you do every day? Do you get up and make a choice and go, you know what, like you said, you know, the little things aren't important anymore. Yeah. Do you have to remind yourself of that or is it just automatic now? Oh, sometimes I have to remind myself because, you know, <laughs> you can have hectic days. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're still going to have like things coming at you, but um, it, it really, it is 
my big thing is that this is temporary. You know, this situation that I'm in, if I'm an aggravator or something, this is temporary. This will pass and tomorrow will be better. You know, I'm going to hang on till it gets better. But I mean, your perspective just kind of shifts. It does. Um, but I think, you know, I used to be really um, bad about how my house was kept. Yeah. Now yeah. I'm like, you know, those dishes will be there tomorrow. Yeah. It's not that big a deal. Yeah. So I, I try not to stress over, over stuff. small stuff. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I did. I used to stress over that. Um, I was OCD in some things. And now, I mean, that cured me. Oh, good. <laughs> That's good. That's always that good. Me, yeah. uh, don't need medicine for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what's the one thing on your bucket list now that you may not have wanted to do before? Like, mm -hmm. I know for me, I have made the decision. I'm like, you know, like I went to New York a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. And I'm like, especially after my husband died, I'm like, you know what? Life is so short. Mm -hmm. And if I want to go somewhere on vacation, I'm going to go do it. Even if I have to go by myself. I'm going back in December by myself. Yeah. And so... So what's the one thing that you really want to do that maybe before you would have been like, well, I, I just don't know if we can or whatever, yeah. but now you're like, no, I'm doing it because yeah. life is short. Well, I, one thing I, I always really wanted to do, I want to travel and I'm not, I've never been off the East Coast. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been up and down the East Coast yeah. and that's it. I mean, the far west I went is Missouri. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I would like to travel some, yeah. but I really want, I said, I said, by faith, I think I'm going to go get my passport and yeah. just get that done, yeah. you know. And uh, I told the kids, I said, I'm gonna take so much of my payday and we'll just set it aside, yeah. you know, and save up mm -hmm. and do something. Yeah. I mean, right now it's a little hard to do a lot of things because the yeah. economy, but yeah. <laughs> hey, I want Don't to- Don't get me started on that. Bidenomics, bidenomics. But I, I really want to, to be able to do that yeah. and work toward that. Yeah. So before I wasn't even a plan for it. And now I'm, I'm starting to think. Of, Have you ever thought about just happen? Get, pulling your kids out of school, homeschooling them, getting a camper, an RV, and just y'all all, all go cross that. country? I would love I that. I could see you doing that. Yeah. I really could. I homeschooled them for a couple of years, but yeah. I like the school they're in now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, God, school. I mean, that that's another, it's a blessing. Yeah. Um, probably the best job I've had, yeah. it honestly, is. Good. It's see how blessing. all things work together yes. for good. Yes. Yeah, so I can still kind of be a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. but with my kids with your kids yeah. <laughs> at yeah. school so, so yeah listen I want to thank you so much for coming all the way down here from West Virginia I yeah. mean that's quite a drive it's like three and a half hours yeah. I think maybe a little longer because yeah. you live way up yeah the other end of Delbarton yeah <laughs> so but I want to thank you for coming sharing your story sharing what you know to be the truth about mm -hmm. how God can help you, yeah. how, you know, how faith, you know, I had done a, I meant to, I went to write this down on my notes. I had done a research paper a few years ago, maybe like two or three years ago in school about how people who, uh, relied on their faith or a higher power. I want to say yeah. God, um, yeah. came through situations a lot better than people who had no, who didn't oh, claim yeah. any kind of like faith at yeah. all. And they bounced back, were more resilient, were happier. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, we're spiritual yeah. beings. I mean, yeah. we have a body, but we're a spirit. Yeah. And so when we feel connected, you know, Absolutely. to God, um, it helps. I think it just gives you a, a hope. It does. And, and hope and, makes all the difference. It and really and we don't have to carry it. Like yeah. he tells us, cast your cares on me. Yes. Bring me your burdens. I'll yeah. take them off your shoulders. You don't have yeah. to carry it. Imagine not having God at all and having to carry the weight of the world every yeah. single day. I, but that's terrible. without him i don't know that i yeah. could have done it no, i can't either yeah. so yeah. yeah but thank you so much i really You're appreciate welcome. you so. it's a blessing yeah. to be here so. thank you guys for watching um please do self breast exams every single month they are so important listen men get breast cancer as well yes. we didn't talk about that yes. but men get breast cancer one in every 15 or something yeah. like that or one in every 18 i'm not yeah. sure about that statistic but do a self breast exam. Get your mammograms. If you have, if your family, you have family history of breast cancer, ask, and you're 20, 25 years old, ask your doctor, say, hey, look, it runs in my family. I want to be safe. Yeah. There's all kinds of things you can do ultrasound, MRIs, mammograms, the 3D, 4D yeah. mammograms, you know, just anything. But, advocate. For yeah, yourself. advocate for yourself. Yeah. Educate yourself on what breast cancer is, even if you think you'll never get it because you never know. Like yeah. I said, one in eight. One in eight women get yeah. it. So, but join me again next week for another great episode. And remember to always dream big because big dreams do come true. Mm -hmm.